Hi friends! You guys know that I'm a little bit obsessed with TikTok right now and I know that a few weeks ago I made this video cutting down my screen time. Um, yeah, that's not going so well right now. And it is a truth universally acknowledged that if there is a new social media platform, a niche about books must arise because us book nerds, we, ju we just have to scream about books somewhere. Of course, there's also a book niche on TikTok called Book Talk. A very interesting place to be, but we'll get to that later. The thing about Book Talk is that books get insanely hyped on there. And yes, I know that books get hyped everywhere on the internet all the time, but like it is incomparable the way that it happens on TikTok. Like the way we hype up books on booktube is kind of like an old steam locomotion compared to just the high speed train that is the hype train on TikTok. To the point that bookstores have little tables with books with a sign that says as seen on book talk. It's wild. So today I just wanted to go over some of these super hyped book talk books and then also give you an alternative book that I think you should read instead, which I guess kind of is a little bit foreshadowing of what I think of most of these books, but also for the books on this list that I do like, I will also give an alternative just so that there's, you know, something for everyone. Hello, but first I want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. Whether I'm finding more effective ways to work or I'm just spending some time on my hobbies, I've noticed that Skillshare is like a major help in actually learning how to do the thing instead of just trying to figure it all out myself. If you don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for curious people where you can explore your passion. Whether you want to learn how to make better logos, take up photography, or just have that little extra nudge to get creative in your spare time, Skillshare has a class for everyone. I've actually been watching this Skillshare class by Ali Abdal on productivity, which has been getting me some great tips on how to step over hurdles and get into the workflow better. And the great thing about Skillshare is that it's also incredibly affordable with less than $10 a month if you pay an annual subscription. And if that hasn't convinced you yet, the first 1000 people to click the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership so you can explore your creativity. It's free. So why not just give it a try and click the link in my description. Back to the video. But first, I think I need to explain myself and why I think book talk is such an interesting place. Um, there are three things, actually. The first thing that I noticed immediately when I first logged into TikTok and very quickly got bookish TikTok content because the tech lords know everything about me and I have no secrets apparently anymore, <laughs> is that BookTok is basically just booktube but like five years in the past. As in, I keep seeing books recommended that were like really popular five years ago. Like it's clear from the type of books that people are talking about that book talk is just going through the same cycle that booktube went through five years ago. And I like that actually, because I think it's a good thing. We don't have to only hype up new releases all the time. The second thing is that people mostly talk about the same books over and over again. And this is the most common critique that book talk gets. And I don't think that this is the people's fault. I think this is a natural consequence of such an algorithm fueled platform. If you make TikToks talking about popular books that a lot of people like, you're gonna get more likes on your TikTok and that's gonna boost you in the algorithm so that more people are going to end up seeing it. And also the algorithm very quickly realizes what types of books you like. So then also you kind of end up getting the same things recommended to you over and over again. So I actually think that the TikTok algorithm plays a really big role in the hyper hype that arises on TikTok. And the third thing that really struck me is the difference between books that get popular on BookTok and books that get popular on BookTube. Like for example, the book Daughter of the Pirate King is super hyped on BookTok right now, but it actually came out like multiple years ago and I remember it not really doing well on BookTube. I never read it because it got pretty mixed reviews, but now on BookTok everyone is loving it. And that's also exactly why I wanted to make this video to give you, the YouTube audience, an idea if these recommendations from BookTok are trustworthy or not. Honestly, I could make like a whole video 
on all the interesting parts of book TikTok and like the massive influence that it's having on the publishing industry. So if you have any more thoughts on book talk, leave them in the comments down below and maybe I will make a video on it. But today I just want to go over some of the hype books. I know I maybe have been a little bit negative about most of them, but that's honestly just like a coincidence that it just happens to be that a lot of the hyped TikTok books I happen to not really like. Obviously, if you liked any of these books, no hate to you, that's completely fine. And maybe some of the books, the alternatives that I recommended would still be books that you would really enjoy. It's actually funny because um, I'm currently at my parents house and usually that means that I don't really have any books to like show you guys because I have all my books in my university room <laughs> but because so many of these books are like backlist books I actually have a little pile of books that I still have here in my childhood bedroom. Um, I, I think that's nice. It like makes me feel a little nostalgic. <laughs> The first book that has been super hyped on TikTok is The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller. So imagine this, you first hear about the premise of this book and that is about this kind of like morally gray Slytherin girl that plans to seduce the king so that she can kill him and then take over the kingdom. And you think, oh my gosh, that sounds absolutely amazing and you pre-order it before any reviews roll in and then you end up reading it and it turns out that the premise was just a front for a completely empty story story that does not deliver on anything that it promises. Imagine that. I don't know. Just, just purely hypothetical. I wouldn't do that. So I think the only interesting thing about this book is its premise, um, but there are definitely other YA dark romances, I guess you would call it, that deliver way more on the romance part, on the dark part, on the actually developed characters and plot and world building parts. Um, so I will re recommend some for you. <laughs> if you were intrigued by The Shadows Between Us because you want a YA romance fantasy that's like enemies to lovers, I would recommend Cruel Beauty by Rosamund Hodge. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling that has a s very similar premise. It's about a girl, Nyx, that is married off to this like monster king and she also decides to try to secretly kill him while she is with him in the castle. This one actually has a lot of tension. I read this a long time ago but I absolutely loved it and I think that like the YA crowd of today would still really enjoy this book. This book actually really focuses on the romance and the characters instead of The Shadows Between Us that feels kind of like all over the place. But if you were interested in The Shadows Between Us because uh, it, it's promise of kind of like dark characters and dark atmosphere um, and you are willing to read something that is not YA so you're okay with something that like really gets like really dark, I would actually recommend another super high uh, TikTok book, which is A Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Very different plot. It's a dark academia about Alex who goes to Yale and people in the student societies use all sorts of dark magic and it's also a murder mystery. Actually, this is also supposed to be a murder mystery, so it actually fits better than I initially thought. <laughs> Ninth House actually has like very, very dark themes, dark main characters, um, so that will deliver. <laughs> and the last one that I do want to quickly mention if you were interested in Shadows Between Us because it was marketed and hyped up so much for having like Slytherin main characters, I would suggest trying out The Puppy War by Arv Huang. Completely different story, it's an epic fantasy about war and a main character who goes to like join the military and learn magic etc. But very, very much Slytherin main character, completely morally gray, will not disappoint. And also on top of that, questions, ideas of war that are often kind of glorified in fantasy, like in this one, by the way. <laughs> then another book that I saw being super hyped on Book Talk is A Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco, a YA fantasy about a girl who finds out that her sister gets murdered. And there's also this enemies to lovers romance going on with a demon that she strikes a deal with to help find the killer. This was also very disappointing to me, not only because the characters were not fleshed out at all and a lot of, just a lot of things in the story did not make sense to me. By the way, if you want like more in-depth reviews of any of these books, I will like link in the corner um, 
to the wrap up where I talk about the book. But if you were disappointed in this book like me, but you do really like this premise of like a main character making a deal with some kind of demon and having some like back and forth there uh, with some mystery elements added to it and you're okay with reading something that isn't YA, I would actually recommend The Invisible Life of Adi LaRue, which is also very hyped on TikTok. I know this sounds like a completely different book and it kind of is, <laughs> but it is also about this girl Addy who makes a deal with the devil that means that she will live forever but as a punishment everyone she meets will forget her. So it really hones in into like the interesting part of the deal and the curse and how that influences her life and it's just one of the book talk books that I do think really lives up to the hype so I would recommend this. Then we have I think one of the most hyped book books on TikTok and that is the A Court of Thorns and Roses series by Sarah J Maas. This is the super hyped epic slash romance fantasy series about Faye and I know that most people absolutely adore this series but I also know that not everyone does. I'm one of those people who just doesn't really click with Sarah J Maas's books so for people who don't really like this I have some recommendations. Uh, so I just realized I barely gave my opinion on Akatar, so here's some context. I'm filming this on my phone, so the audio quality is not the best, but we have to roll with it. I really enjoyed the first book, but I never got invested enough to finish the second book in the series. I personally thought everything came a little bit too easily for Farah, the main character, and I thought the story was too focused on beauty and looks for a book that's supposed to be a beauty and, uh, you know, beast retelling uh, and I also thought that the story had no plot continuity. Something I also noticed is that Sarge Mas has a tendency to write all her major characters to be these like epic gorgeous alpha borderline Mary Sue characters and I understand that a lot of people love that but I personally prefer my characters to be kind of shitty. If Akatar interested you because it's like a Beauty and the Beast kind of enemies to lovers retelling, I would suggest The Wrath and the Dawn by Renea J, which is also a hyped book talk book that I 100% approve of. This is also about a girl who gets kind of like abducted and taken away, except not to a fake country, but to like the palace of the Caliph because she's gonna get killed by Dawn, but it's a 1001 Nights retelling, so she knows what she's gonna do. She's gonna try to stay alive. Maybe, maybe you know, maybe falls in love with her enemy. Who knows? This to me is one of those peak enemies to lovers books that just combines beautiful lyrical writing with very emotional character work and a wonderful romance. So to me, this book gave me everything that Akatar couldn't give me. But I know The Wrath and Dawn isn't very action or adventure based, whereas Akatar also has a lot of like a like epic fantasy elements. I want to recommend one of my favorite YA epic fantasies and that is the Rebel of the Sand series. This is a pretty classic chosen one story about a girl who lives in this kind of like Arabian inspired fantasy country that breaks away from her family and is going on this traveling journey to find like one of the big cities that she wants to live in full of adventure and fun and it actually also really subverts a bunch of common tropes. Um, so I think this is actually a really great thing if you want like YA fun adventure fantasy. And then of course, aside from Akatar, we have the other super famous Sergei Ma series, Throne of Glass, um, which I am also personally not really a fan of. I don't really want to go into my opinion on Throne of Glass too much because it would honestly just turn into a roast since I quite honestly didn't like anything about this book. Uh, from the Mary Sue main character to the overfocus on romance to the cliches to the lack of world building to the again lack of continuity throughout the series. Um, but I don't want to hate too much on a book that I know a lot of people love. So in short, I think the Throne of Glass series is a pretty standard epic high fantasy with the chosen one main character and that there are many others in the genre out there that I think are way better executed and also more interesting. So I do just really want to recommend another epic fantasy series that I think anyone who likes Sarah J Maas 
would also really love and that I think is a lot better is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. This is an epic dragon fantasy where we follow multiple characters in this country where like war between the dragons and the humans in different countries is looming. Pretty plot heavy, we follow multiple perspectives, really reminded me of the way Sarah J Maas world builds with this very like myth heavy focused on aesthetics and culture world building but I personally think that Samantha Shannon did a way better job at really creating this wonderful world. There's also a sapphic romance at the heart of this one that I thought was very beautifully done and this book also has an actual continuous plot line. <laughs> So yeah, I would recommend this to everyone who loves Sarah J Maas or everyone who was like kind of disappointed by Sarah J Maas but wants something similar, Prior of the Orange Tree. Yes, I know it's 800 pages. Most people are kind of intimidated by the fact that this book is 800 pages but if you read Sarah J Maas then I know that you are already used to thick books. <laughs> and then, kind of a funny one, we have of course the super hyped books Shadow and Bone because of the TV show, everyone's loving them. I also enjoy this series, but I just want to recommend some other things that I think do it just a little bit better. I have an entire video about my in-depth opinions on Shadow and Bone, um, but although I love it as a solid YA fantasy, there's definitely something left to be desired when it comes to interesting main characters and excitement of the plot, in my opinion. But I just want to recommend some other books that also have this kind of like chosen one fantasy country YA vibe. First one that I would recommend is The Children of Blood and Bone. I don't understand why this book's not super hyped on TikTok. It follows the exact same formula, but like not in a bad way. Chosen one trope, magical people, main character finds a crew, goes on a journey to save the world. This one is based on Nigerian culture and it is just high action YA fantasy fun. And another YA fantasy series that I think everyone should read is An Ember in the Ashes. This one is kind of inspired by like Roman culture. Um, and we follow on the one hand a lower class girl who is kind of like joining a rebellion to take down like the people that are oppressing them. And on the other hand we follow kind of like a high class military guy who is really struggling with whether he wants to continue supporting the military and the oppressive government or wants to desert and it is wonderful. I think this one's also hyped on book talk so I approve. <laughs> and then another book that was like really hyped uh, on booktube like five years ago and has now seen a huge resurgence on book talk is We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. I remember reading this and just like bawling my eyes out at 17 years old. Oh my gosh, I was 17 years old. Yikes. Wait, no, no, no. I read this almost exactly seven years ago now. Oh my god. This is kind of like a mystery thriller contemporary. It's one of those books where you are slowly but surely figuring out what is going on. And I really enjoyed this so I understand that this is hyped right now. I definitely think that a lot of people would still love this book today but I still want to recommend an alternative maybe for people who read this a while ago and want something with a similar feel um, but is a little bit more mature. And to those I would actually recommend Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. This is contemporary fiction with like a small dystopian element to it and just like We Were Liars it has that thing where most of the time you're just learning about the characters and their stories but slowly but surely you are figuring out this mystery element slowly but surely you're figuring out what's actually going on. So yeah same vibe and Ishiguro is really good at keeping your attention and really like showing you all the little kind of like almost cringy details of every character's personality. Highly recommend. And then the last one that I see being hyped on book talk a lot is Caravel by Stephanie Garber. This is a YA fantasy story that follows Scarlet who joins a traveling magical circus to find her kidnapped sister there. It is marketed as being this really magical spellbinding fantastical story but I would actually recommend you read the book that this is very clearly just ripped off from 
from, and that is The Night Circus, which is a fantasy book about a traveling magical circus and the people that perform there, the stories that they have, and especially the two magicians that are in a contest with each other, except they don't know what the contest is. Both of these books are described as being like really magical and beautiful. Caravel feels like as if the author just took everything that is typically seen as very magical, like the cliche things that are seen as magical, like instruments playing themselves and potions, etc. Basically the things of which we've already seen them a lot of times as being very magical things and therefore, to me, they are not magical and fantastical anymore because they're not original anymore. The Night Circus is actually super magical and constantly creates these like imaginative scenes that are so dreamlike and unlike anything I'd seen before. So if you have been intrigued by Caravel, I would just read The Night Circus. I know this one's YA and this one's adult, but I think anyone will enjoy The Night Circus, even if you usually enjoy YA. Those were some of the very hyped TikTok books that I've read and my thoughts on them. Let me know if there are any like really hyped TikTok books that I should read because I've definitely seen some that I haven't read that I'm like, maybe I should read that one. Again, let me know in the comments if you have any thoughts on book TikTok in general and what you think of it. Like the video if you enjoyed this kind of content and subscribe if you want to make sure you don't miss any other videos. You can follow me on social media at the book Leo, and I really hope I will see you soon in another video. Goodbye!